Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. My name is Miro and today we're gonna be talking about Capianio spiders. I decided to make this video for several reasons. One of them being a lot more people are getting them and even some experienced tarantula keepers are not sure about their venom and I often hear questions about like are they dangerous because of their name wandering spiders. So this is the first thing. Let's get this out of the way. Their venom is not medically significant so they will not kill you. From what I've heard is similar to a bee sting. So they have pretty big mandibles. I wouldn't want to get bitten by one of those but it's not gonna kill you it's not the brazilian wandering spider the phoneutria it's not those another reason why i decided to make this video is because i got a bunch of cool feeding footage and i also wanted to dispute the myth that they are kind of like these wild spiders you know because also again they're called wandering spiders but they are totally manageable and the third reason is i saw several of them in nature in costa rica so i actually can show you a bunch of footage of them being in the nature and different forms because they have a lot of different color forms so let's get into it. So I recorded this footage yesterday just to demonstrate how calm these spiders can be. And here you guys can see this is her fake egg sac. She is mature, so she laid a phantom egg sac. I actually didn't expect her to be mature yet because she is a little bit smaller than the ones that I've seen in the nature. But maybe if you guys saw my last week's video, you already know that sometimes the captive bread spiders they don't actually make it all the way to their full potential and here you can see she's around nine centimeters which is under four inches so it's not a giant spider i really expected that she's gonna move one more time and to demonstrate you how calm she is actually this is basically the third time i'm doing this the first time when i flipped the lid she was sitting on the lid but my camera battery died and i didn't notice it so i was like i didn't know i'm not recording so i nudged her on the leaf and then take some, took some pictures and that was it then i decided all right i gotta record it right because like what am i gonna show in the video so i actually you know reopened it took out the lever that she was still chilling on it you know took her out took some more pictures and i was like okay now i'm done finally but then i look at the pictures and i was like hmm there's just not enough light so i decided to actually do it for the third time actually set up the camera on a tripod which also didn't work for me i had to kind of figure out how to do these real macro shots but I was able to take some cool pictures so I was pretty happy about that that was the main reason why I took her out for the third time because I was just wasn't happy with the quality <laughs> I'm gonna show you some cool feeding clips after I show you these spiders in nature so if you guys are getting them you can you kind of get an idea of how they live so here you guys gonna see different color forms of Capianius Getazi and this is a male and look at him he's almost blue it was really incredible and the female was actually really nearby she was on like a leaf next to him here is another Capianius Getazi this one is a little bit more I want to say kind of like a sandy color and it's feeding on a beetle so they have a strong bite, they can get through beetles no problem through their shell. And here we got an orange form of Capianius Getazi. I was able to take some nice pictures of this one. And here we got them mating. And it's actually the male that is on the top. This is Capianius salei. And this is probably the most common one in US hobby. It's called Tiger Wandering Spider. That's the common name in the United States. And here we got Capianius Cosinus, I wanna say. <laughs> and this lady looks thick, huh? I bet there's a lot of babies coming out of her shortly after. And here's the bonus species, Stinus species. And I just wanna say, we saw all of these spiders in one night on one hike in like, maybe within like, half a kilometer kilometer crazy since capianius come from humid areas you wanna provide them with a similar environment so i usually give them about one and a half two inches of substrate that i keep damp some moss something to climb on and let me show you what i use for the babies so here is actually capianius salei sitting on a cork bark right there it's a feeding day so they're gonna they kind of hungry right now so this is what i use for the babies it's good because it can open from two different sides so you can flip this open or you can flip this open so juveniles are keeping something like this and basically same setup here on the top i have some moss to just basically keep the humidity again a little bit higher and this is actually my macrotenus kingsley yeah and i keep that the same way actually as i keep my capianius 
and my doll I keep in these arboreal enclosures anything like this or basically exoterra with front opening is also really cool so you get to watch them hunt and one thing to add I put this sheet of plastic on the top just to keep the humidity in this way I can control the ventilation and the humidity all right let me show you some crazy takedowns let's start with this one that you guys saw in the opening and what I did wrong is basically I shouldn't have hold the roach for that long I should just let it go because it's not good for the spider to be biting into the metal but thankfully nothing happened to her oh, I heard something here is a cool arboreal takedown they remind me of wolf spiders with their takedowns but they do it arboreally too which is really cool to watch because sometimes they would be kind of like they look like they are aware that the prey is there and they start moving to better position and then all of a sudden like a torpedo like a ninja they go down and just grab it so here I'm doing another inappropriate feeding and I'm giving her dubia that's way too big for her. It ends up being pretty entertaining. At first it looks like she just gets it and I was like wow she is tough. She can she has a strong bite but then eventually the dubia gets away from her and she goes on a hunt after it and it's really cool to watch because she doesn't give up. She's just so determined to go and get it. She feels the vibration of where the dubia went. She is just going crazy from it. In the meantime, the dubia is hiding behind the leaf and it's like, okay, I'm safe. She goes and grabs it and, you know, you guys just gotta admire the determination of the spider that she just doesn't give up. You know, a lot of spiders, when they miss, they just done with it. Not these guys, they will actively pursue their prey. And just a few quick words on what you should feed to your spider. Don't feed anything this big, <laughs> at least not all the time. Just give them something size of their abdomen. I think that's like the best judgment. And if they too plump, you don't need to feed them. But I show you just some bad feedings because, you know, they turned out to be the most fun. What can I do? Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button, hit the notifications button, hit the subscribe button. I hope there was something fun, there was something educational. And don't forget to leave me some comments if you guys want to chit chat about spiders. Always appreciate it. If you guys like my t-shirt, this is our merchandise. It's a good way to support our channel. You can find us at spidercafe.shop. I'll see you soon. Ciao!